Thank you, Steve. And as the investigation continues into why Joseph Santos was driving so erratically, tonight we're hearing from one of his friends who says he considered Santos a member of the family. Eyewitness News reporter Kim Kalunian continues our team coverage live in studio now. Kim? Well, Shannon, Joseph Santos's close friend tells me he was not a violent man. Instead, he says he was outgoing, sociable, and had recently purchased the white pickup truck that ended up at the center of yesterday's shooting. A white pickup truck riddled with bullet holes Thursday. 32-year-old Joseph Santos now identified as the man behind the wheel. Michael Murray, a friend of his for more than a quarter century, now grieving the loss of a man he considered a brother. He'd give you his last breath. As Murray watched the events of Thursday unfold on the news, he didn't know it was his dear friend behind the wheel. A text message later in the day conveyed the news he didn't want to hear. Santos was dead. Devastated. Devastated. Police say more than 40 rounds were fired after the truck led them on a high-speed chase, ramming other cars captured here on Rydot cameras, rocking back and forth until police opened fire. Santos was struck multiple times and died at the scene. Murray tells us Santos was a father. He has two little kids. And that's what breaks my heart. Santos did have a criminal history, including charges of driving with an expired license, shoplifting and breaking and entering, spending a year behind bars at the ACI. At the time of his death, he had an active warrant out for his arrest. But Murray says that doesn't mean he deserved to die. We all put our heads on the pillow at the end of the day, whether we do wrong or right. You know what? This should have never happened yesterday. And coming up new at 6, we'll tell you more about Santos and his past, plus what friends and family are planning for this weekend. Live in studio, I'm Kim Kalunian, Eyewitness News. Thank you, Tim. And while police insist the driver was in imminent danger to others, some who knew him tell us they feel police went too far. Eyewitness News reporter Kim Kalunian spoke with Joseph Santos's friends and family today. She joins us now live in studio with what she's learned. Kim? Well, Mike and Shannon, we've been reaching out all day long to friends and family of Santos. Many of them are too emotional to speak with us at this time, but many of them are now also calling for justice in the wake of his death. <laughs> Dramatic moments on 95 Thursday, leaving 32-year-old Joseph Santos dead. Friends and family now grieving his sudden loss. Wow. he give you the shirt off his back. Mike Murray, a lifelong friend of Santos, frustrated with police. Cops killed him. Cops killed him yesterday. Police say Santos led them on a high-speed chase, ramming other cars captured here on Rydot cameras. Officers fired more than 40 rounds. Santos died at the scene. Santos did have a criminal history and had an active warrant out for his arrest. Earlier this year, his roommate filed a request for a restraining order, saying in an affidavit, Santos punched him and, quote, said he was going to kill me. The no-contact order was removed a month later. Murray says Santos's criminal past did not mean he had to die. We all put our heads on the pillow at the end of the day, whether we do wrong or right. You know what? This should have never happened yesterday. And family and friends that we spoke with today tell us that they'll be holding a vigil for Santos tomorrow afternoon in Providence. I actually just spoke with his sister a couple of minutes ago. She says this was excessive force and calls this an extreme tragedy. Reporting live in studio, I'm Kim Kalunian, Eyewitness News.